we shall see Jesus in the air coming after you and me joy is ours to share what rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky will the Lord be worth singing what a day of shouting shouting on that happy morning when we all Oh, the saint and dead Rising for that jubilee That is just ahead In the twinkling of an eye Change with them to be All the living saints to fly To that jubilee Oh, what a day of singing, singing What a day of shouting, shouting On that happy morning When we all shall rise We began to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join that song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Sing it with us. Oh, oh, what a day of singing, singing. What a day of shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Now I said, oh, what a day of singing, singing, what a day of shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rightly rise, what a day of glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, when we meet our blessed Savior, God. Remain standing, please. Please remain standing for prayer. It's good to be together again tonight on this Tuesday evening of revival. You God is stirring hearts. And uh, I've been thinking about that verse today. Uh, 1 John, the third chapter, where it says, Behold, what manner of love that the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Have you ever thought about what a privilege it is to be called a son of God or a daughter of God? To belong to God and all that he has for us? And he's got something good for us tonight. So let's open our hearts. Let's join together. Brother Denzel is going to come and open us in our prayer tonight. And let's pray that someone tonight would enter into the Lamb's Book of Life. I had a scripture all day, been on my mind, Revelation 11th chapter, where the two witnesses lay dead in the street of Babylon for 1,260 prophetic years. And amen, you can't kill the word, you can't kill the spirit. They're eternal. The word dead means that people wouldn't let them demonstrate or operate. If we, through the power of the Holy Ghost, will follow the Spirit, the Word and the Spirit will demonstrate. It will just demonstrate the power of God, the love of God. And just think of that now. And when we're living in false religion, as many religions are today, they say the two witnesses is Moses and Elijah. And then they come right on behind that, amen, and say they're eunuch, eunuch and Elijah. Well, I agree with them on one point. The Word and the Spirit is two persons. Amen. God is a person. And John 16 chapter said, after he, the power of the Holy Spirit come, he. He's a he. And so I believe tonight if we, by the grace of God, stand on our feet like we are today. I've been in services where I walked into services and never did sit down. How'd you like to see services like that? Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, demonstrating. Right. Amen. Some people just are scared to death of the Holy yes. Ghost. Right. 
My, 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 my. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you and God ain't never met yet. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, you talk about revival now. I'm getting revived. And I hope you are too. But let's just turn loose. Amen. When the wind blows, amen, you can't say the wind, see the wind blow, but you can see the effects. Amen. You can see the effects of the Holy Ghost. And brother, I'm here to tell you he's been working. How many glad to be in here all service? How many's coming all week to the service of God? And then we may go another week. But every unspoken prayer request tonight, those that are sick and afflicted in body, I just wondered today when us coming up the road, coming home. When's it going to be my last message? When's it going to be my last worship? But you know what? Here's my favorite scripture. You can take this and put it in the bank. I don't care what kind of trouble you're going through, what circumstances of life, what kind of sickness you're going through. And there's a vast difference, and I believe and I know. Well, the devil believes in fear and trembles. You ain't getting off his base too much if you just believe. But brother, I know that all things work together for good. Amen to them that love according to his purpose. And you know, when I read that years ago, here's what I said. Just take me, Lord, and do what you want with me. Isn't that a wonderful way to feel? Father, we look to thee again tonight. We certainly thank you for every blessing that you've given us, Lord. The service is gone. Last night, Brother Kenny preached a wonderful message, and we loved him. And we told him we loved him. And Father, we told him by the grace of God that we need resurrected by the grace of God. And our Father, we pray tonight through faith it is the gift of God, not that anyone should boast. For we're saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. And our Father, we come to you tonight, amen, for our brother Jack going to preach the message. We pray that you would overshadow him. Amen. Touch him, our Lord. Let him be free tonight. If anything will come to hinder, we put a rebuke upon that. And our Father, we believe that if for someone unsaved tonight, we pray that you would move in the service and amen, bring conviction on that heart. And then our Father, we that are saved, amen, we worship you in spirit and truth. And without the power of God's Holy Spirit, there is no worship. So we pray tonight of those that are sick in body, amen, overshadow them tonight and touch their body and give them strength. For we know that, amen, if we ask you through faith in the word of God, it's the only thing will ever please you tonight. Amen. If we worship without faith, amen, there's no worship. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, amen, will touch the Word, and amen, reveal unto us what you think of us tonight. We're so thankful tonight, amen, that our sins has been passed and gone from the East and West Sea, and never no more to be remembered upon us. And through the power of your resurrection, we believe through faith that the same power that raised you from the dead, it's the same power tonight that raised men and women from the dead state of sin and by one spirit we're all baptized into one body and we're a member of that one body so we thank you tonight for every blessing from the past and Lord we're in a new service tonight and you're a great high priest could be touched with the feeling of our infirmities you're a man standing in the midst of the golden candlestick amen and say unless whoever will come and call upon the name of the Lord and they shall be saved saved. So we pray tonight for every effect, amen, there's in the cause. Where's people here tonight may be sick in body, amen, be lost, but we believe that God, you move upon them and we lay hands upon them and they shall recover. This is what we believe tonight. This is what we stand on. The one body, the one faith, the one spirit, the one baptism. And when we go looking at two things, amen, we'll go into confusion. But you are the same tonight. Yes, Yesterday and day and forever. So we'll step in the background, give you the praise for all the blessings you've given us, and that's what we come for tonight is the amen yield to your spirit. Amen. And give you praise tonight. And you said you'd be lifted up, you would draw all men nigh unto you. So in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would have your way and we'll thank you for it. Amen. 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 Remain standing tonight. 
Praise God. We're glad that we're here in the house of God tonight. And we believe that revival is here. Amen. Sing this with us. All over this land, all over this land, get ready. God's going to send revival all over this land. We're going to be marching to victory with power in our hands. God's going to send revival all over this land. Where two or more are gathered in his name, there he said he would be. Right here in this very room, all of us agree. That he's the only mighty one And we need his power to stand We believe God's gonna send revival All over this land All over this land All over this land Get ready God's gonna send revival All over this land We're gonna be marching To victory With power in our hands God's going to send revival all over this land. Like a fire out of control, sweeping across the plain. God's going to pour down manna just like a thunder shower of rain. A mighty rushing wind will blow when he waves his mighty hand. I know God's going to send revival all over this land. This land, all over this land, get ready. God's gonna send revival all over this land. We're gonna be marching to victory with power in our hand. God's gonna send revival all over this land. Hallelujah, sign the glory. Hallelujah. Revival all over this land. We're gonna be marching to victory with power in our hand. God's gonna send revival. God's gonna send revival. God's gonna send. God's gonna send. God's gonna send revival. While traveling, through While traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to the glory land. I'll not turn back for some tomorrow. My trials here, I'll understand. I want to know more. I want to know more about my Jesus. Yes.
Let's sing it one more time. Let's praise the Lord on this. I will serve thee because I I'm so glad we have a high priest tonight we can come to. We have the healer of the broken heart, the binder up of every wound. We have a great physician that we can come to tonight. We have one who can save and satisfy to the very depth of our soul. And there's not a need that he cannot meet tonight. And if you have a need tonight, I'm going to invite you to come and bring it to him in prayer tonight. How many have someone on their heart that needs to be saved? I'm going to ask you to come and to represent them tonight in prayer around these altars as we go, Lord, in prayer. I also want to remember Sabrina Allen in our prayers, Charles Basford again. Let's continue to pray for Jimmy Dykes and Sherry Jackson. And let's remember Barb Cash as well on our prayer concern. You know, I, I know God's always answering prayer. And you know we ought to always give him praise for what he's done. But I'm so thankful to look out and to see brother and sister early here tonight. And we have been praying for sister early. And what, what answer to prayer. So to God be the glory. Also, Marty Pritchard we want to pray for tonight. This is Jody's mom. I'm going to ask you to come tonight and bring all of our needs to the Lord. He knows everyone that we have. But we have not because we ask not. I've asked Jimbo Dalton to come and lead us in our prayer tonight. Let's stand up. Come on. Come. Gather around the altars. Let's pray for this revival tonight. Let's pray that God would take us a little deeper into the things of Christ. Let's pray the Holy Spirit would come and do the preaching tonight. And let's pray that God would have his way. Man, good to feel the excitement here at Post Town. The revival excites us. We got much to pray about. Our country, our churches, and the sick and afflicted. Let's agree together in prayer tonight. God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for revival, God. We thank you, God, uh, for God-fearing man, Lord, uh, that'll get down in the Word of God and begin to study, Lord, uh, and bring out a message, God, uh, that would challenge our hearts, uh, uh, Lord, that would uh, all penetrate, Lord, the soul, God, uh, uh, Lord, that would cause somebody to get up out of their seat uh, and make their way down to this old-fashioned altar and turn it all over to you, Lord. Uh, uh, Father, we ask God, uh, uh, Lord, that 
you anoint these men of God this week, God. We ask that you anoint brother tonight, God, as he brings forth the word, God. Let it come down as fire from heaven, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for revival. We thank you for your healing hand, God. We ask, God, that you be with our nation tonight, God. Lift them up and let them realize they need God back in it. Lift our little churches up, God, throughout the community, God. We're asking that you be with the pastors, God. Be with Brother Kevin here, Lord, as he pastors this flock, God. Give him wisdom. Lord, give him courage to preach the message that's needed. Preach, God. Lord, let this come. Lord, gather together in one spirit tonight, God. Let the spirit flow freely from breast to breast, God. And Lord, let us see a great move. Lord, let us see a great move. As Stephen was preaching heaven down, he looked up and saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Let them preach like that this week, God. Let them realize, God, the need, Lord, for the lost souls. And God, we're asking, Lord, that you give the brothers souls for their labors, Lord, this week, God. We thank you, God, for the congregations that's come out and visited. We thank you, Lord, for the ones that's packing, uh, uh, seeing the need for the revival, God. The church needs uh, all fed and we need to get revived. Uh, so, Lord, revive us. Uh, let the Spirit flow freely from breast to breast tonight, God. Give us just what we need. Let us have a shout for you tonight. And, oh, Father, everything that's done and accomplished, We'll always stand uh, in the shadows of the cross and give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. And the church said, Amen. Praise glory to God. Have your way tonight, Lord. Amen. Have your way, Lord. Glory. Take off this old earthly man When Jesus calls my name These bones have been a prison Filled with suffering and pain Well, I'll leave it here and to The dust it shall return I won't be a slave to this house of clay When I hear Jesus say Well, rise up, my children it's time to come home wake up my children you've been asleep too long we'll take off those great clothes for a garment spotless and wide a brand new body waits for you in a land where you'll never die well i've stood at the graveyard where they lay my loved ones low knowing that for sure in this ground i too must go but when, when I, I do don't weep for me because i'm not gonna stay on resurrection morning i'll get up when i hear him say well rise up my children it's time to come home wake up my children you've been asleep too long take off those great clothes for a garment spotless and white a brand new body waits for you in a land where you'll never die well christ himself yes. shall descend when that trumpet sounds and all the Sleeping. They're going to come up out of the ground And those who are alive and remain Will meet Him in the air So comfort one another with these words 
promise to meet me there. And he says, rise up, my children. It's time to come home. Wake up, my children. You've been asleep too long. Take off those great clothes for a garment spotless white. A brand new body waits for you in a land where you'll never die. A brand new body waits for you in a land where you'll never die. This is uh, kind of one of my becoming one of my favorite songs and uh, the reason it is because it reminds me of the day I got saved I tell people this sometimes I've been saved now almost 40 years this June and uh, I'm 65 and 40 of that I've served the Lord and it's not always been a, a bed of roses but I have to remember the day I got saved many times just like when I got called to preach I have to remember that day because Satan always tries to tell us we aren't saved or we can't preach but God is the preacher. And I'm telling you, when it reminds me of the day that I first acknowledged him as my Savior, I think about that every time I sing this song. And it's called, I Know That Man. I know that man who walked among thousands and taught by the shore. And Peter called Lord. Well, I know that man who fed the hungry. And I know that man who gave to the poor. And I know that man who called Lazarus' name. And up from the tomb, Lazarus came forth. I know that man who walked on the water. On the sea, and I met that man at an old fashioned altar. I met him one night on my bended knees. He changed my life and set me free. Thanks be to God, he now knows me. I'm glad I can say I met him one day. Yes, I know that man. Touch Barnabas and his side return. Oh, and I know that man who walked out of a fiery furnace unburned. And I know that man who hung on the cross. He died for every soul that was lost. And I know that man this old world denies. But I call him Savior, the Lord of my life. I know that man who walked on the water. And I know that man who calmed the sea. And I met that man at an old-fashioned altar. I met him one night on my bended knee. Well, he changed my life and set me free. Thanks be to God, he now knows me. I'm glad I can say I met him one day. Yes, I know that man. Oh, I know that man who walked on the water. And I know that man who calmed the sea. old-fashioned altar. I met him one night on my bended knees. Well, he changed my life and set me free. Thanks be to God, he now knows me. I'm glad I can say I met him one day. Yes, I know that man. Yes, he changed my life and set me Thanks be to God, He now knows me. I'm glad I can say, I met Him one day. Yes, I know that man. I know 
that man. I want you to uh, really listen to this song tonight. I didn't tell them what to pick out. Uh, they asked me what I was preaching tonight, and I said, I don't want to do that. I want you to just you pick out the songs that we're going to sing. And I'm so glad they picked this one out because it, it does go right with my message tonight. God, God has been more than faithful to me. When I, when I let him down, he never lets me down. And this song just simply says, my God is so faithful. And I want to hope and pray today, if you don't know him tonight, listen to me. If you don't know him tonight, listen to the message. Listen to this song. Because I'm going to tell you something. He's the dearest, most precious friend. People let me down, Brother Kevin, but God is faithful. And I'm thankful for that. So you pray that while we sing this today. Well, I've made promises I could not keep. Oh, and I've said some things that I didn't mean. And with good I've given my word And when it fell through Well, it caused much hurt Then I met a Savior Who said, trust in me Oh, I'll never leave Where you are, there I'll be And He's always been there Right by my side He stood the test of time God has been faithful. He's always the same. Though I have failed him time and again, his love remains. He is unchanged. Though I may stumble and cause him much pain, always there when I call his name my God is true my God is able my God is faithful well just ask Abraham and Sarah who were promised a child oh and it seemed impossible God gave them and then there was Daniel who fervently prayed and found him to be true in trials of faith. And three Hebrew boys who would not bow to the king who said, Will I see for now? Well, they were not burned, and they shouted that day. And this is My God has been faithful. He's always the same. And though I have failed him time and again, his love remains. He is unchanged. Though I may stumble and cause him much pain always there yeah. when I call his name my God is true my God is able my God is faithful through joy or through pain sunshine and rain my God is faithful Certainly is a privilege tonight to introduce our speaker. We're thankful for Brother Jack. 
he and Vicki coming to the church around three years ago. And you know, as I look out and see what God's been doing, it's a special thing that God has brought folks together here at Post Town. You know, it's no surprise we've got a lot of preachers around here. Preachers like to preach. <laughs> Even when they're called up to pray. <laughs> they like to preach. And I think the one the, the challenge is that we don't want to leave any out. Because God is not finished when he calls a man to preach. He doesn't remove that calling from him. And so there's a special reason God is doing this here at Post Town. We have almost close to 10 here. I have watched Brother Jack over the past three years. He and I and our relationship is really bonded. And I've seen his heart. He loves the Lord. And he wants to serve the Lord faithfully. He told me in the office as I was getting the mic on him tonight, he said, I'm nervous. (laughs) I said, that's good. That's good. I think Sister Prophet told me every time they sang, she was nervous. When you stop getting nervous, that means you're depending upon yourself. So he's dependent upon God tonight. Let's pray that God will use him. Let's welcome Brother Jack. Well, I'm very thankful to be here today. Thankful for another opportunity to preach God's Word. I'm thankful for those of you that have come. I saw something Brother Tim posted this week um, that kind of goes along with my message today. You know, back when I was a kid, uh, I went to a little church on Route 4, and every time somebody had revival, we all attended. It wasn't just, uh, it wasn't just that church. We've got away from that, and uh, I'm glad that he posted that because we do need to set aside our differences and come together, and, and one mind, one body, one purpose for one reason, and that is to lift up the name of God. Jesus is what it's about, people, and uh, I hope and pray tonight uh, as we get ready to preach what I feel like God's laid on my heart. I've preached it, I don't know how many times, in my sleep. Uh, I, I don't sleep much, and somebody asked me what kind of, if I got some sleep last night. I said, yeah, I got a little bit of sleep. I always write down things. I never look at them. Uh, I'm a shotgun preacher. You're going you're gonna to find that out pretty quick. Um, I wish I was more organized, but I try to know enough of the Word so when God wants me to say something, I know enough of it or I can share it with you. Listen, people, it's important today to know where you stand with God. And, and I know, I know the devils. I, I talk to young brothers all the time, and I know the devil's always trying to tell you you're not saved. But listen, it's by the Word you're saved, not by your feelings. It's by the Word. And the Word says what it says. And if you claim the Word, you can't fail. You can't fail. I'm going to preach today uh, a little bit. I'm, um, I don't know, I don't title my messages much, but I'm, my Bible's about falling apart, so to pray for me that I don't lose it while I'm doing this, because I like to carry it. Uh, I'm going to title this message tonight, Can One Person Bring Revival? I thought about Brother Kevin as I was preparing this message. He preached a message not too long ago out of the 15th chapter of 1 Samuel where Saul came back, you know, with the, with the things he shouldn't have come back with. And Samuel had to tell him, you know, to obey is better than sacrifice. And it, it made me understand some things today. My dad's with me here today. Uh, my dad's 88 years old. And uh, I'm thankful that dad was who he was. Now, everybody doesn't get the privilege uh, that I've had. And I will tell you, I studied, I looked up, you know, and there was 43 kings in Israel, 43. With the combined United Kingdom and Judah and Israel, there was 43 kings. There was only six that was righteous. I want you to think about that for a second. There was two that was lukewarm, I think, two that was lukewarm, two they don't really know about too much. But to live and to be raised in a family that taught you the things of God, what a privilege that was. Now, my dad was brought up uh, in eastern Kentucky. He took me back a years ago. He took me back to where he, where he was raised. And I really couldn't believe it, Brother Kevin. The room was about from here to you, square. It still had the rocks as, uh, as posts on the side, and they had a wood stove to heat with. And it was underneath a cliff 
that they cleared the land off with, and that's where he lived, that's where he grew up. His whole family, if you knew his family, they were pretty much all uh, drunks. They, they drank all the time. They still, many of them still do. But my dad made a decision one day. And Sage, this reminds me of my conversation that I had with you a couple weeks ago. You have to stand. Somebody has to make a decision. Somebody has to change what they've been doing. And I thought about this story today, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be preaching out of the uh, 35th chapter of the book of Genesis. I'm just going to read about 10 verses. If you can, would you, you could stand with me. I don't know if they've got them. I think they got them up. If you have your Bible, though, I'd like for you to bring your Bible and, and turn to it. It's not hard to find. It's the first book in the Bible. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the, book of jo- the story of Joseph. And I, the reason I love the story of Joseph is because Joseph never questioned God, no matter what. And if you're going to change today, if you're going to start a new life, and you're going to start depending on what God does and not what you do, you're going to have to accept God's will. I'm so glad that our brother quoted that 828 today. I'm going to quote it again today for you, uh, if sometime maybe during the message. But I want to tell you something today. I'm going to challenge you today. Let this be the day that you change your destination and that you change your generation. My dad did that. My dad had never seen my dad drink. I've never, never heard him say a cuss word. He worked seven days a week with Brother Brandenburg many times. And he never asked for anything. He was a stern man. And I'll tell you, I got a few lickings over the years, and I probably still got a few scars. But I thank God every day that I had somebody that made the decision as the 35th chapter of Genesis when Jacob changed things. Now, I want you to listen to me today. And God said unto Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, Now, this is, where this is the meat of it. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. And let us arise and go to Bethel, and I will make thee an altar unto God. Now, he wasn't going to an altar to pray. He was going to make an altar to to praise God for what he'd already done. He made an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Sechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Now I'm going to read that again. And they sojourned in the terror of God and upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. You know why? Because they knew God was on their side. God's on your side too if you're a Christian. So Jacob came to Luz, where in the land of Canaan, that is in Bethel, he and all the people that were with him, and he built there an altar and called the place Eth Bethel, because their God appeared unto, unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under the oak, and under the oak, and the name of it was called Elon Bashuth. And God appeared unto Jacob again, and he came out of Pandanaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name, and he shall be called by Israel. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the other opportunity to be in your presence tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God that's quicker, more powerful than any two-edged sword, piercing the very asunder of the soul and spirit and the bones and the marrow. And God, it even sees the thoughts and the discerners of our mind. And we pray, Lord, today that you would take that word and touch the hearts of the people here today. Let us, Lord, be determined in our mind that we're going to make it. That we're going to commit everything to you. As Jacob did that day. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would take this message and make it something, Lord, that would convince and help people to understand that we need to get as close to God as we possibly can. Because times are coming, dear Heavenly Father, dark times. And Lord, if our salvation is not sure, we too may fall. And I pray that you would help us today, Lord. We'll give you honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, there's a scripture that I think about sometimes when I preach. 
And uh, that scripture uh, tonight comes out of James 5.16. It says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, a lot of people think that's physical healing, but I'm going to tell you something. The Bible tells us to confess our faults and to pray for one another so our spiritual man can be healed, so we can receive the Word of God with gladness. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, Brother Kevin's been having us meet uh, the last few months. I don't know how many months it's been, Kevin. You know, probably a year or so. We've been meeting on, a, on a, one night a, a month. And we've been coming in about 6 o'clock and praying for revival. One man had an idea to get to have revival. That's this gentleman sitting right over here. That man makes a difference. I'm saying in Joseph's life, in the 35th chapter it talks about Jacob, in the 36th chapter it talks about Esau, and in the 37th chapter we find the start of Joseph's life. Joseph was a man that was settled on his salvation. Now, he was 17 years old when he dreamed his first dream, and he made the mistake a lot of people do when they're young. He went around bragging about what God had given him in his dream. And it made his brothers envious of him. And because of that, they conspired to sell him to the Ishmaelites. And most of you guys know that. You know the story. They sold him to Potiphar's house. They took him to Potiphar's house. He prospered. The Bible says that Joseph prospered at Potiphar's house. Now, the reason I'm saying that is, is because if you're steadfast and unmovable and ever abounding in the work of the Lord, God will, He will bless your life and He will prosper your life no matter where you are. He, he, was, he was prosperous at Potiphar's house. And again, Satan come on the scene, as he does many times, and he came on the scene, and before you know it, the, his Potiphar's wife had uh, claimed that he had abused her, and they threw him into prison. He stayed into prison for the next 13 years of his life. He was in prison, and he was doing the same thing that he always done, and he gave God the glory and God the praise, no matter where he was. Now, the Bible says that God blessed him there, too. And he became in charge of all the prisoners. That's a big shock. He became in charge of all the prisoners. And I'm saying today that Joseph became a, a leader no matter where he was. You know why? It's because that he depended on God's word and God's work. And no matter what condition, as Paul said, that he found himself in, he was content. After he, got, after he got done, after he left there, the Bible plainly tells us that the butler and the baker had dreams. He interpreted them. They went back. The butler got restored. He forgot about Jacob. And if it was me and you, we'd have said, Where are you, God? I've done what you told me to. Where are you? I'm going to tell you what he did. He was steadfast and unmovable. And the Bible tells us that after, after a period of two years, the Bible says that they brought him out because Pharaoh had a dream too. And he couldn't get anybody to interpret that dream. But they heard a man named Joseph. I'm going to ask you something tonight. Does people know you in your neighborhood? Do they know your name? Do they know what you stand for? Do they know where you are on Sunday mornings? I've said this many times in my life. If anybody wants to rob my house, they ought to know exactly when I'm, not, when I'm gone. I'm gone on Sunday morning, I'm gone on Sunday night, and I'm gone on Wednesday night every week. That's one thing I like about Joseph. He never wavered. He knew exactly what to do every time. And I'm telling you, when he got to Pharaoh and he interpreted his dream, he put him in place that one man saved a nation because of his obedience to God. I'm going to talk to you just a minute today about something. We have to get to the place in our life where we are totally, honestly, not, not what we appear to be on the outside, but we are committed to God no matter what the cost. And we have to be determined in our mind that no matter how we feel, we're going to serve Him. The Bible says in that 12th chapter of Romans, Therefore I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will. You see, that's what Joseph did. 
I'm sure he didn't feel good in that prison. I'm sure he didn't feel good when he was accused falsely. I'm sure he didn't feel good when, when, the, when the guys forgot him, when they interpreted his dream, and those things came to pass. They forgot about him. But the God had a specific time that Joseph was going to rise up and bring his family so they would survive. And I'm asking you today, will you be that person? You might be the only hope your family has. I know a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to leave it up to Brother Kevin. He's a good preacher. I'm going to leave it up to him. Listen, Kevin may not meet my family. He may never meet your family. They see your life every day. Are they, do they know where your life stands? And do they know that you're steadfast on the promises of God? Amen. The Bible says God's not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness, but His long-suffering to us were not willing that any of us would perish. Amen. He wants us all to be saved, but there was only six kings that would serve Him. I'm telling you, I had a family that brought me to the house of God. Praise God for that. I tell Tony this many times when we go out. Not many people have a preacher that they're brought up and know what's right and wrong. Many people that we see around us, the only Bible that they see is you. And are you steadfast enough to be that person that will change a generation? I'm going to tell you something because Dad made that choice. My dad, and I hope Dad don't get mad about this. I never got to meet my grandfather because he died of drunk. He, my dad told me that he, he worked at a sawmill and made good money for that day, but every, every time payday would come, he would take it to the bar and spend all the money, and dad and the kids suffered because of that. Many of you have been in those situations where you have suffered because of that. And I'm saying that we, somebody has to break that mold. Somebody has to get to the place where they say, I'm not doing that anymore. Amen. They have to get to the place where no matter what comes their way, they're going to serve God. I love what Paul said in that 8th chapter, in that 35th verse of the book of Romans. Now listen to me. I know sometimes, I know sometimes it gets weary. We get weary in well-doing. I know we do. I know there's times Brother, Brother Kevin seen me when I was weary. I, I had to come here and heal. And I know a lot of times there are things that happen in our life that we just don't see. But I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. I am convinced that God is for me, not against me. Who shall separate me from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature can separate me from that love. And when you're that determined, the devil doesn't have any room to come into your life. Amen. Joseph was just one story. Look at the story of Esther. Mordecai wouldn't give in. He wouldn't bow, he wouldn't bend, and he wouldn't break. And when they came against, when Haman came against him, the Bible says that he sat down and he covered himself in sackcloth and ashes. He wanted to destroy Israel. But see, God had a plan. He always does. God has a plan. That's why I love that scripture. Brother Brandenburg quoted, We know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are the called according to His purpose. Listen, who he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed into the image of his Son, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. And who he did predestinate, he called. But he called me. And those that he called, he justified. And who he justified, he glorified. And I'm saying to you, what are we going to say to those things? God be for us who can be against us. Amen. Esther went before the king. Ahasuerus is his name. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I hope I did. But I'm saying that he went before, she went before the king. Listen, and it was dangerous to do that too. You didn't go into the king's presence unless you were summoned to come in. But, but I'm telling you that Mordecai needed someone to stay on his behalf. And you know what happened? God came on the scene. Haman got hung where, where, where uh, Mordecai was supposed to got hung. God cleaned that act up. And then you got Nehemiah. Nehemiah. 
He was the same way. He was determined. He was called. He knew that if God be for him, who can be against him? He went, he went to the king and he told the king, I got to go back and build the temple. And God made a way. And I'm going to tell you something today. When I look at that 11th chapter of Hebrews, I think about those things, and I won't read it all today, but I think about the, the book of Hebrews and how it talks about all, those, all the saints that have went before us. I'm going to tell you something. If you ever get discouraged because you think you're the only one that's went through something, then go in and read the Bible. You'll find out you're not the only one. There are people out there that have went far more, beyond far more than I've ever went. So why should I get discouraged? Why should any of us get discouraged? We live in the greatest country. I don't like what's going on in this country, but I'll, we still live in the greatest country in the world. We had the freedom to come and to be able to fellowship one with another. We're able to change our minds if we want to and react to that. God has overly blessed us. But you look at those saints in that 11th chapter. When it starts off with the sacrifice of Abel. And then it goes on and it talks about Noah and it talks about Abraham and it talks about Sarah. But at the end of that chapter, it said there were others that were sown asunder. They were, they were cruel to them. They were sown asunder. But the Bible says in that first verse of that 12th chapter, it says, Wherefore, listen to me. Now, now I'm going to tell you something. Now, you don't realize this. We are also compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets us and run the race. Run the race that's set before you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy set before him went all the way to the cross, despising the shame and sits down at the right hand of God making intercession for you and I. Why should we be discouraged? We sing that song. Why should we be discouraged? We shouldn't be discouraged because we got a God that's going to pull us through. And I'm going to tell you something today. God wants you to know tonight. You may, you may, you may, you may. People say, well, you know, I'm saved. And listen to me. If you're saved, I'm going to be bold here. I don't have the pastor here, so I'm, you may, I don't have the answer for this. Uh, maybe. But I'm going to be a bold here. Whether you get mad at me or not, I'm going to say it. And I'm going to tell you what. If you don't care for your neighbor sitting next to you and you're not compassionate about them. If you're not worried about somebody's soul sitting next to you. You better question your own salvation. Jesus came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't come to condemn us. We were already condemned by the law. But He came to seek and to save us that which was lost. And I'm saying that if we are determined in our mind, and we are persuaded that we are a child of God, that we ought to love our brethren better than we love ourselves. Paul said in that, fourth, that second chapter of Philippians in the fourth verse, he said, Don't think on the, your things, think on the things of others. And let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. I love that scripture pastor quotes all the time. I think it's in 16th, I don't know, I might quote this wrong. 16th chapter of John, the 33rd verse, I think. He said, I write these things unto you because I know you're going to have trouble. There's going to be tribulation come, but be of good cheer. Listen to me, people. It's about time we start making the decision that needs to be made. This half-hearted servant God ain't going to cut it when you stand before God. You've got to be determined that no matter what comes your way, no matter what, what, the, what the devil puts in front of you, no matter what trouble you've got to go through, you've got to be steadfast, unmovable, ever allowing the Lord, the Lord to be done in your life that you might prove what is that good and acceptable thing for God. There's a lot of things... I love what Tim put on there the other day about Christians. And I love what Kenny said last night too. That we need to put our little selfish things aside. What we think's right and what we think's wrong. And realize that we're put here to do one thing and one thing only. Or God would call us home. And that is to go out in the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in. And if you don't have compassion to do that, you better check your own self at the altar. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. And you probably get mad at this too, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. The, when the church doors are open, there are people here that need to hear and see you. Why do they need to hear and see you? I'll tell you why. Because sometimes the devil beats them down so bad they don't know which way's up and which way's down. And they need somebody that's strong like Joseph. That when somebody comes or something comes against them, that they can go to you and say, I know you made it. I can make it too. Now listen to me, I say all these things to say this. It's about time, people. 
It's about time that you know who you are and who you, who's, whose child that you are and start acting like it. Start acting like the child of God that you are and start caring about people that are lost. You want to have revival? One person can change it. One person. One dedicated person can get on their knees every night and make an intercession for you and change your outcome. Do you know your decisions that you make today will determine what tomorrow will be in your life? My dad is not perfect. I'll tell that to his face. I mean, we argue all the time. He's, he's more stubborn than I am. But if, he, but, if he said, but if he said, Jack, bend over, I'd say, where at? You know why? Because the Bible says to honor your father and mother. You see, I was taught that when I was a kid. And I was blessed to, to know that. And that changed not my, only his dad. My dad made that decision, changed, changed every, everything that he was brought up under. He changed it. I don't know why. He's never really told me. Uh, other than the Lord, I don't know what convinced him to do that. But he met my mom. They brought me to church every time the doors were open. And that's the only place I knew where to go. And that's still the only place I know where to go. Now, you may not have had that. You may not have had that privilege that I've had. But that doesn't mean you can't start today. I'm going to finish with a verse here in a minute. And I want you to turn with me, if you, if you will, Send 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. I'm going to finish with this today. I want you to understand something. There is something about God and how He works that amazes me every time He does it. I told every preacher in here, and I do appreciate the preachers here, and I appreciate the prayers. I know that's what got me through tonight. I was so nervous. I don't know why I get nervous behind the pulpit, because the Lord always comes through. But I like this. Before I read this, let me say, I always say one more thing. I shouldn't say that. But I, everybody knows me, knows I say this. I think it's in Second Peter th chapter 3. Peter says, he says this, he said, I come to stir up your minds by way of remembrance that you might be mindful of the words spoken by the holy prophets and of us, the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Because we're living in a day like he's talking about where there's going to be scoffers saying, where is the promise of his coming? Since our fathers fell asleep, things remain as they are. Listen to me. You, you not only need to be saved, and you not only need to be dedicated, but if you're going to win your kids and your grandkids, it's got to start with you people. My kids didn't know anything else but church because of my dad. Joseph's family were saved from starvation because of one dedicated man of God. And I'm telling you people, you can make a difference. You think you can't make a difference, but you can. Now I'm going to read this. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brother kind, kindliness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall never, ne neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence. Now listen to me. This is the verse I want you to hear. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Amen. Not only you people, but the people you're sitting next to. Amen. Somebody's watching your life. Somebody, somebody is looking to you for an answer that they don't know what that answer is. I think about how ungrateful his brothers were. 
And I can't help but think that when they realized what that dream was that they were told 17 years prior, when they came and they were saved because of that dream that he told them, I can't think of anybody that would have more remorse for their deeds than them. It's about time, people, that we start having some remorse and some humbleness and just confess our faults one to another that we might be healed. Pray for one another that we might be healed because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I ask you tonight as they get a song and you stand across the building and we get a song invitation, I ask you tonight... Would you make that commitment tonight where you'll say, I'm going to be the first one in my generation that's going to change things. I'm going to be that person that's going to be dedicated. I'm going to be that person that's going to not miss a service no matter how I feel. I'm going to be that person that's going to love my neighbor. I'm going to be that person that's going to reach out to my neighbor and my loved ones. And I'm going to be that person that asks for forgiveness when I need it. And I'm going to be that person that's going to be an encourager to the person sitting next to me. I'm going to be that person that can be there for somebody when they need me. I, th- I hope you think about that today. I pray that if you're in a, in a valley and you don't know where you're at, you don't know what God's doing, maybe you've never made that commitment. Maybe you're one of these people that just think if you're all right, if you just do this and do that. Listen, if, if you're not pleasing God, the Bible says in that sixth verse of the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it is impossible to please God without faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If you're not listening to the Word of God and you're not listening to good sound preaching like our brother gives, every week you'll faint. You'll faint. You need to be fed spiritually. And I hope and pray that you'll think about those things today. Will you be that person that will step out as they sing a song? I don't know what's holding you back sometimes. I'll tell you, the Spirit's been so strong this week. Sometimes I wonder what it's going to take to get people to understand that they need to give everything to God. We, listen, people, we are bought with a price. We are not our own anymore. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And these are all that are of the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but of the world world pass away in the lust thereof but he that abideth in God will live forever I ask you tonight just let go and let God just let go and let God listen that's why we're here tonight we're here to help you to do that we want you to understand that there is nothing in this world worth losing your soul over nothing I don't care what it is there's nothing worth losing your soul and I hope and pray as they sing this next verse and then I'll have pastor come to close out but If you need to pray to that, listen, you know where you stand with God. I don't have to tell you, you know where you stand. Do you trust Him completely with all your heart? Don't lean to your own understanding. You need to trust Him. If you do that, He won't fail you.
I'm going to ask you to be seated. If you have a need tonight, come on. Just come on up here. Whatever it might be, I'm going to invite you to come. Come now. I'm going to ask some of the preachers to come. Lay hands. If you want to be anointed and pray for tonight, come on. We have not because we ask not. Our Father desires to bestow His goodness, His mercy tonight. There's hope. There's healing. All we need is found in Jesus tonight. Come on, just step out and come. Whatever it might be, it might be just between you and the Lord. And He knows about it tonight, so come on. But continue to sing as, as these are coming. Let's pray tonight. If somebody's here that needs to commit their heart to Christ, come on.
Praise the Lord. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to challenge you to be much in prayer for this week. You know, the devil fights hard against, especially against revival, but against people getting saved. All right, kingdom of peace. All right, that'll be our closing. That's right. I know Jimmy knows that. Before we close tonight, I want to uh, remind you, love offering, just drop it in the um, containers on your way out. That love offering will go to all the speakers. And um, so just bless them tonight, but be much in prayer. Folks, I'm going to tell you, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Our unity is found in him, and we got to stake to him. It's through him that we live and move our, and have our being, and then we, he keeps us together. I'm going to tell you what, we will overcome through him, okay? Be in prayer for tomorrow night's service. Come out early for the prayer meetings. And let's pray. God will open the very heavens. And he'll pour down upon us that which we so hunger and desire. I want more of Jesus than anything. Thank God for Brother Jack. I'm going to ask Jack to make his way out. And Vicki, if you would go with Jack so they can greet you on the way out tonight. Yes. Yes. I praise Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. Brother Early, would you please stand and close us in prayer and then we're going to sing this song. Go ahead and lead us in a closing prayer, dear brother. Sweet.